A. Calote died in his front yard in late February, beneath a sky so pale it seemed infected. There was a wintry, wet snow bite to the still air, and the sprawled open pages of the book at his side had grown slightly damp by the time his daughter Joanna came home and found his body lying in the grass by the long dirt driveway. Hello, hello. I have made very slight progress. I'm two chapters in on chapter three, page 35, <laughs> like 400. Um, but I've had a chapter from each sister's perspective. So I kind of have like a bit of a motive, an idea of what's going on. So going into this, I knew that it was going to be about two sisters that whose dad die and they take care of this magical library. These books are magic and they keep it safe or something. And now I know that we have Esther, who is currently in Antarctica, constantly on the move, never settles, is on the run from something that her dad has told her she needs to keep moving, she has to stay safe, it'll keep her and her sister safe. So she's kind of got this protective role of her sister, but because of that, it's put a strain on the relationship and it's very distant and just not close because they don't ever see each other. And then we have Joe or Joanna who has stayed at the library and takes care of the library, keeps it safe, puts up the wards and they just communicate via postcards and never really talk to one another. And they don't know, their dad died with this book that they'd never seen before and they don't know why. And I think Joe has a lot of resentment towards her sister because her sister's out traveling and living her best life while she's stuck in this library to take care of things and like follow in her father's footsteps instead of like doing whatever she might want to do. Um, so I think the sister's dynamics in this is going to be quite interesting. Esther is in Antarctica right now. Normally she moves, I think every year or something, but she met this woman, Pearl, and doesn't want to leave her. So she's breaking whatever rule has been set for her. So I think at some point, obviously, these two are going to collide together at the library. Things are going to go horribly wrong before things get better. Um, but that's where I'm at. I kind of just know the sister's motives and what's kind of going on. I don't quite get the magic system still, but I know that will come to me with time. But I'm going to now eat my pasta. Delicious. Um, and watch Kayla's new video and then I will probably continue reading until I'm unable to stay awake any longer, so. So I just got to chapter five and it's finally starting to pick up. I don't know if it's the writing style I'm not quite jiving with. It's very like blunt or stunted I guess and to the point but also has like a lyrical metaphorical simile vibe to it I don't know it's an interesting combination and because it's in the third person I just have a harder time connecting to the characters already and then on top of it it's just kind of feels like an info dump it's just been a lot of telling me information about their past and their sibling relationship and um like where they're at in life now and it's not really like showing me things quite as much so I don't feel that connection but now that there seems to be some type of danger and she's being watched through the mirrors like now it's like kind of getting exciting so I'm hoping that this pace will continue and I won't be so in my head about the writing and I can just kind of like slip into this but it's taken me over 50 I'm on page 64 of this book now so 64 pages in, and I'm just starting to get into it so who is Nicholas who is this Nicholas nothing has happened nothing just a third POV why nothing has happened I don't think I've actually properly um, kicked this vlog off. So hello, hi, welcome. My name is Sam. Um, you're on my 
YouTube a channel where I read and talk about books and show you my life sometimes. Or crying dogs. So, with that said, <laughs> hello and welcome. Um, it is now May, which means that we are finally kicking off the Escape the Readathon. Plus, I'm also participating in the, the Vampire Diaries Readathon round two. I'm participating in. Mm hmm. That too. And the My Shelf Readathon. Yeah, he, he knows. Thank you. Yes, we're going to read so many books. I think he just wants dinner. Um, anywho, though, I have updates for reading to share with you. As you either have seen or will soon see, I am physically reading and listening to the audiobook for Ink Blood Sister Scribe. So that's my plans for this evening. But today at work, on and off, I... Okay, well, I guess one. I listened to the... Bunicula collection books one through three um this was a uh, kelsey team film crew impromptu buddy read that just kind of happened um so i listened to these books they were very cute i'm not rating them or anything they're middle grade children's books about a dog and his friend the cat chester um and harold is narrating basically it's kind of like detective mystery books in a way but he is sharing with us about how his family found a bunny and brought it home. And the bunny is a vampire <laughs> and drains the color of vegetables. I read the first three. I don't know if I'll continue. Probably not. I think it was cute, but it's just not like my thing. It did make me laugh out loud, which was fun too. But it's not necessarily like my thing either. So yeah, I listened to that. It was fun. Um, really though, which, oh, also, I... So, <laughs> for Escape the Readathon, Team Film Crew had got to their first prompt, like the first game, which there's two prompts. We don't know which prompt is the correct one to win the game, so we're reading for both. And Bunicula, I just lumped all three of them in one. I didn't count them as separate books, even though they technically were. I'm not here to strategize correctly, apparently. Who knows? But it counted for the second prompt and so the first prompt I had been listening to People Like Us by Dana Mel. Melly? I'm not sure. Probably Dana Mel. And I'm 65% into this. I've been listening to it on and off throughout the day and I'm enjoying it for what it is but I'm not like loving it. It is young adult dark academia, your typical mystery thriller. Somebody at the school shows up dead. She's taken it into her hands to kind of solve and investigate what happened um, because she, fun twist for this one, it's she's been blackmailed by the dead girl, I think, question mark, to like frame her friends for the death or something like that. So I'm not fully sure what the premise is. I just know that there was like this computer website that she had to be, make friends with the hacker girl to like get access to. And with that access, she's been, like, instructed to do different things through, like, secret messages. And basically, it looks like a setup and things aren't going well for her right now. And then also on top of that, you've got a lot of just high school drama. I'm pretty sure this is set out of high school. You don't see much of the school. They don't talk about it. But there is, like, a headmistress and a bunch of these girls and then um, parties and so on and so forth. So very, like, high school experience. She was dating this guy and then kiss her best friend it's a little sapphic at times but also just a lot of drama a lot of layers of these characters just mingling I think it's interesting I'm intrigued to see like what's gonna happen in this last few chapters because we know our main character Kay Donovan not related uh, <laughs> uh she has like this past that she doesn't like talk about and doesn't tell people about and so we, as the readers, are starting to discover more about what was going on there. And so I am intrigued. I will definitely finish it, and it'll probably be 3, 3.5. It's not super gripping. I'm not, like, so engaged and in love with it. But, like, you know, it is what it is. Um, and it works for the prompt, so that is also great. That is uh, my little reading update. I will check in with you guys either, either later for this or tomorrow. I'm honestly... 
really tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. So I might call it early tonight and just get some sleep and just try to finish People Like Us for Escape the Readathon and then, you know, just like move on with my life. So that's where I'm at. Thank you for sticking around. Hello, hello. It is a rainy, rainy day. Um, wish Austin was going to be home to build a fire, but alas, it's all right. It's finally the weekend, but before we get into weekend reads quickly, I finished reading People Like Us, and a lot of the Goodread reviews are, it's like a pretty average, like 3, 3.5. Some people love it, so don't be discouraged um, if you're interested in it, but a lot of people had issues with the ending and didn't like how it wrapped up, and I would say that it wrapped up pretty fast, like it was a really quick ending, and it wasn't the most satisfying of endings. This is often pitched as a sapphic mean girls boarding school murder mystery. And that sounds fun, and it is, but the amount of drama, oh, she slept with him, he slept with her, it was all of blah, blah, blah. I didn't care enough about that part. That part was kind of boring to me, I'm going to be so honest. So it was just like, mm, eh, towards the end, it was a little drawn out, which is drama all the time so in the end i too am giving it three three point five like it was good and um once i get inside and out of this frame i will tell you about lock every door by riley sager okay and then as for riley sager's lock every door now the premise of this is we are following jules look at me jules and she's pretty down on her luck. She's in between apartments. She just broke up with her boyfriend. Like she's kind of going through stuff. And she has the opportunity to basically get paid to stay in this apartment in New York. Like this sky, like tall building, beautiful view. Um, and she's literally like strict rules, which is weird, red flag, but she doesn't mind. $12,000 <laughs> paid every week, um, $1,000 per week for 12 weeks. She stays in this apartment she doesn't leave she has to stay the night no guests can stay the night and she just like chills and hangs out there and gets paid to do so and that's my dream that's my dream job i would love that imagine me in my books just hanging out in a new york apartment paid to be there forever incredible mm. and of course she meets one of the other people who are also like co-habiting a space like living it like renting the apartment but they're being paid to rent it it's a strange concept that I don't know how to put into other words but she meets this girl Ingrid who's been living there for like two weeks and it's not until Ingrid starts talking more about the curse of the Bellamont is that what it was or something like that the curse of this apartment building and like theories around it and what people kind of think and say as well as Ingrid going missing then suddenly Jules is like, oh, I'm interested. I want to know everything. And I'm like, okay, you knew this girl for like maybe two hours. And that's a stretch, but okay. That's that's the push you needed. Go off, girl. And then from there, like, it is her just trying to find Ingrid. And then the ending happens and you're like, that's so not super satisfying. If you liked the Paris apartment, I would say you would probably like this as well because it has that similar, like, bigger cast of characters that you're meeting like all within this apartment and there's like a mystery going on um not quite the same but has some similar vibes to it so if you liked one you'd probably like the other but overall the ending it just it just started getting more and more lackluster as it was going on Jules had major dumb main character syndrome and I was just like girl why are you making these decisions why are you leaving very important voicemails on this man's phone like this is dumb so, you know, si uh, Riley strikes again at writing a girl that just does stupid things. And it's like, come on. But besides that, it's a three star. Just a flat three. Home Before Dark is still my favorite Riley Sager. Will it ever be beat? I don't know. But that's what I read today. And then I will update a little bit later on my current reads. Oh, goodness. <laughs> like a proper hot mess i need to shower so bad tonight but i think i know what this is but it feels smaller than i was hoping it would so i'm worried about it so i'm hoping maybe it's not what i think it is instead let's take a look see no it is 
that's fine. I'll survive. I was kind of hoping for like a bigger paperback, like bigger than this, you know, but I will take it. It'll be fine. It's just less enjoyable to hold. I was hoping for a more floppy, large edition. I have this now. Um, I decided to pick up the Jasmine Throne just on Amazon because it wasn't in any of the bookstores that I went to and I've been wanting to read this. So hopefully, maybe this month, but you know, this is, is pretty chunky. 500 and like 40 pages, which isn't terrible, but you know, is still a lot. But the trilogy is getting completed. I think it's just a trilogy. But the third book comes out this year, so I'll be able to properly read the series, which will be nice. But at the same time, don't love the sizing, but it's fine. It's fine. It'll be okay. So yes, that's uh, my little haul. <laughs> okay, I'm making mac and cheese. I'm so hungry. And I'm also going to try my darndest to finish editing this really way too long video. I need to learn to shut up. <laughs> um, so my vlogs aren't ridiculously movie length because that's too much for even me and I don't want to subject everybody else to it all the time. It's like a very rare special occasion, you know? But um, yeah, I'm making mac and cheese because I'm hungry and I'm going to finish editing tonight so that tomorrow and Sunday Austin and I can just hang out and read and get cozy and it's going to be so great. I'm so excited. So that's kind of my weekend plans, but I will check in with you guys at a later time, hopefully when I'm fed and cleaned and feel good. <laughs> my little haul from my thrift shopping experience yesterday um which went fantastic I found some good finds I usually stick to thrifting like classics because that's what there's a bigger selection of um but for whatever reason I straight away I went down a different path this time and I got some wins I picked up To Kill a Kingdom this is apparently by Alexandra Cristo um, which I've been wanting to read this for so long. It's like siren, mermaid, fantasy, romance, young adult. This is one of those books that gets uh, recommended to Aquariuses. So I always like think about picking it up, but I just don't. But now I have a physical copy. So now it's gonna be a lot easier to force myself to pick it up. So huzzah. And then I found a real steal, a real big ol' win. This is Girl, Woman, Other by Bertanine. Evaristo, a sympathy of black womanhood, her language spills over the page. I don't remember 100% what this is about. I've been wanting to read this. So story time. Two years ago when the like hot girl summer was like really big and popular, I really wanted to do a hot girl summer reading vlog where I read five black authors that really paved the way in hot girl summer being a black created a trend that the white population really took over and ran with which you know it happens so this was on that tbr but i never got around to finishing that video because by the time like i was ready to read the thing summer was already over and i was like okay i'll do it next year and then it wasn't trendy anymore so i just like didn't do it <laughs> um so this is a book that has been on my radar for so long and i'm so happy to have it so i can give it a read finally and then the rest these last couple ones are all horror thrillers that I found, which was so exciting um, because it's very hit or miss. But I scoured the whole mystery section because it's so vague what kind of like genres they put things into. 
And then I got this, which is St. Martin's Press, so I'm gonna have the cute little picture over it. Um, but this is a thriller that I picked up and did not realize that it was Minotaur when I did. Next one, I'm so freaking excited. This is Lakewood by Megan Giddings. Ooh, I am just so excited. This feels like that um, craft paper almost. This is a startling debut about class and race. Lakewood evokes a terrifying world of medical experimentation, part The Handmaid's Tale, part The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. I don't know, not familiar with that one, but I've had this again on my radar, on my TBR for a while. So I finally have a copy and it's so beautiful and I'm so happy to have this, it's gorgeous. And then I came into some good luck and I found not one, but two Ruth Wares. Incredible. So this is in a dark, dark wood. This one I know less about. I know it's like one of her early on books that people do like, but I know that The Turn of the Key, and I think it's, what's the other one that everybody really likes? Okay, so this is our debut. I don't really know what this is about, but I am excited. I enjoy Ruth Ware. I've read a couple of Ruth Ware's and I've enjoyed them both. So, you know, so far so good. The Death of Mrs. Westaway is the other Ruth Ware that I really want to find, but I almost actually bought this when we were doing our little independent bookstore shopping day. I almost picked this up when we were at J. Michael's, but then I decided against it because I was like, oh, it's Ruth Ware. The audiobooks are everywhere. I don't need to spend like 20 bucks on a book. Um, but then look, I found it. Here it is. Um, and so much cheaper than, uh, the normal bookstore. So it was kind of just a win. I'm excited to get to this eventually, but that's my little haul, that's the things that I got. Austin picked up three things. He got the original illustrated Sherlock Holmes, um, 37 short stories and complete novel um, from The Stand magazine. So this is in pretty nice condition, looks good. Um, and then he also got The Call of the Wild and White Fang. Um, Call of the Wild was like his childhood favorite book. So I think he got this mainly because he wants to read it to his niece and nephew. And then finally he got Cooked by Michael Pollan. Um, author of The Omnivore Dilemma. Like I said, um, Austin is the type of person that wherever, whenever we go book shopping, he'll pick up a few things and there'll always be random nonfiction for whatever's going on in his life that he's got an interest in. It's adorable. But those are my little, little, little haul. Goodness, I think I'm having a stroke. I, the amount of times that I just repeat a word rather than continuing on with a sentence, very stilted, I don't know. Um, but... This is what I was reading yesterday. I'm 187 pages into Sunbringer. This is the sequel to God Killer by Hannah Canner. And I would say that I'm enjoying it, but not quite as much as the first one. Um, we're still following the same perspectives and in addition to one more. Um, so we've got a lot of things going on. We're following a few different people in different areas at different times. Um, we've got my favorite POV, which is Kissin, which picks up right where we, like the cliffhanger that ended um, in God Killer. We pick right back up from there, thank goodness, because that was so intriguing and exciting and I loved it. And then we've still got Elo and Ina and Skeddy all, they're still together, they're figuring stuff out. And then we have the new perspective of King Arryn, who we are still, we're not getting a lot of his perspective, so I'm really interested to see like how all this is going to play out. Um, again, I'm like already halfway and not a lot has happened. I think there's been two interesting action scenes. Kissin's on her own doing her own little, um, I don't want to call it a quest because it's not a quest. She's fine. She's coming back to the group, but is wreaking havoc while she does it in such a fun and adoring way. I love Kissin so much. She has been my favorite perspective. And then um, we've got the other gang and they're basically just figuring stuff out, where to go from here. Um, because the whole thing, you know, God killer, um, gods are being killed and a lot of politics are happening because of it. And so, that's kind of where we're at. I obviously don't want to spoil anything for anybody interested in going into this, but I do recommend it. I think it's fun, but it is dense. It is a lot of like switching perspective. It's a slower type of fantasy. It's not like action all the time. Definitely more 
character and world driven than plot heavy but overall I am enjoying it and she's also just so pretty so you know like I can't be upset so this is what I'm going to continue reading um because my audiobook is going to be taken from me tonight and I need to finish this before game night so great <laughs> love it to see it so yeah this is my reading plans and then I'll hopefully update you from there good morning it's uh to Monday but last night, I ended up finishing Sunbringer, the sequel to God Killer by Hannah Canner. And I ended up really enjoying this. I I love these characters. They're just fun to see, like, how they interact. I would say Hannah knows how to end a book. Like, the first half, when I think I last checked in, I was saying that it's a little bit slower of a fantasy. Not a whole lot is really happening. You're just getting a lot of perspectives and like it's kind of like planning almost and then the second half really just picks up in pace and it just starts to get a little wild a little crazy and a lot more action heavy but then like just the end of these books they're not quite like insufferable cliffhangers that like you absolutely have to know what's gonna happen next like I can wait a year just fine for the next book but it still ended in a way that like had me really giddy and excited and just like having a very tense time reading and so I just overall like I really enjoy this series I just need to applaud Hannah because Hannah is doing something that is not happening in fantasy books nearly enough and it it's done so seamlessly so well it doesn't feel forced it doesn't feel like it's trying to check off boxes it just feels natural to this world this is a very fantasy world it has made up towns a made up map made up gods for every little thing we've got gods of white lies we've got gods of broken sandals we've got it all we have this map that is so pretty and it gives you the hint of this has some world building to it this is unique and yet with that said this is such a queer norm book there are so many queer characters that are just sprinkled throughout our main character kissin is definitely queer i can't say for the other characters that we follow exactly but all of the side characters are just naturally um, queer we've got trans rep in here we've got um, a sapphic married couple that we see a lot there's mention of a gay couple like there's just so much queer in this book and it's normal and it's not a big deal it's just like hey this is part of my story in some way based off who I am dating or what is going on and then like it's fine no one has qualms with it it's so beautiful and then on top of that because queer fantasy does exist. There are so many different disabilities represented. We've got a deaf char side character that's very important. Kissin herself has lost her leg, so she is physically impaired and has a prosthetic that her other friend, she's got two friends, they're married. One of them is deaf. One of them, or the same one, I can't remember exactly, but one of them is also in a wheelchair sometimes. But Kissin has a prosthetic leg that was made by her friends and she's a badass god killer like it's just so well done i love that they are using sign language in this book to communicate with tell like it's just it's so good and i just applaud this book and i think more people need to go in this direction of just like having things be normal but make it fantasy and it still works it still makes sense and it's still cool because when you're war when you're war, when you're in war and battles and like going through hard times, like, yeah, you're gonna have disabilities and that's normal. And you can make ways to work around it so that your main character can still do badass things because that's just life. Anywho, I really enjoy this. I'm giving it four stars. It's, they're never quite five stars for me. I think just because they're slower paced and you're focused like on the character's relationship and then like the world building is going on behind the scenes, the politics is happening, and then like it ends with such a bang. It's a beautiful four stars. So this is what I read. I might end up just 
listening to the rest of Inkblood Sister Scribe today at work instead of trying to physically read along because I'm not loving either the narrator or the writing style. I can't figure out which it is. For God Killer, I know that the narrator is not well loved by a lot of people. I don't like it either. Very monotone, very like stunted when reading the, the sentences. So I don't necessarily recommend the audiobook, but I do like the books. I'm having a similar issue with Ink Blood Sister Scribe, but I think the writing is more lyrical than the narrator is giving it credit, if that makes sense. And so I think I might just try to race through the audiobook unless it gets like really interesting, but it's just been so boring so far and nothing has happened. So I'm just like waiting for something to go on. So that's kind of my plan. I don't really know what else I'm going to listen to today at work, but I'm excited. I have two things on Libby that don't, I don't have the physical book for, so I might pick those up or I might start uh, getting my holds on Hoopla. I don't know. We'll figure it out though, but that's kind of the plan. Another one finished. Mm. Eliza, I love you. I adore you. Don't be mad. Three stars. <laughs> it's just going to be a flat three. I had a really hard time connecting with these characters. I think it was something to do with the way this was written just didn't work for me. One second, there's a bug. Something about this writing style though that just didn't quite work for me. I couldn't connect with these characters. I had a very hard time caring about anything that was happening with them they were often not with each other and I was really hoping for more of like a sister rivalry with tension and a reunion and like that emotion to it and there it was lacking that for me because I again couldn't connect to these characters and the pace really didn't pick up to like 70% through the book and then I was like oh my god things are happening but I still didn't care <laughs> By then I was like, yeah, there's action and the action is good, but I am not getting the payoff because I wasn't invested to begin with. So I just didn't love this. I'm sorry. But hey, that's my second book of the month for this year, which is a good, good start. We're getting somewhere. After this monstrosity, I say that just because it was thick and hard for me to get through because I didn't really want to finish it. But after I finished... Ink Blood Sisters Scribe. I ended up picking up I Want to Die But I Want to Eat Tabuki, Tabeki. It is a Korean steamed rice cake dish that I have no interest in having, so sorry. I'm not brave with my cuisine. But this is a memoir transcript of this woman in Korea talking with her therapist slash psychiatrist psychiatrist and just talking about like her problems and I like this for the purpose of showing people's darker sides just being honest about like how we really feel or how she specifically feels and how a lot of negative emotions come with that and a lot of toxic thinking that you really have to work through and like find the root cause of like why you feel and think this way and then like fixing it for like a better life and so on, which I do appreciate that. I can't rate something like this though because it's so personal and the people who relate to it are gonna relate to it and really like it and then the people that don't really relate to it aren't going to get much out of it. So it's kind of a fine balance of like, I don't know who this is gonna be for, but whoever finds it, if it finds the right audience, it's going to be a smashing hit. I had a really hard time connecting, weirdly enough, for and the literal transcripts where it's like psychiatrist, sentence, 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 me, thoughts, me, saying stuff to the psychiatrist. There was a lot of just that. It was just dialogue. But I couldn't connect. It didn't feel very intimate. It felt a little bit more analytical, like reflecting on this transcript after all of it has happened, obviously. <laughs> but because of that, it lacked the emotion that I feel you would get out of a therapy session like when you're really trying to find the root cause and it could have been the audiobook narrator just not quite conveying that to me um it's also set in korea obviously because the author is 
Korean and this was um, translated to English. So the translation could have just been a little bit off. What is happening back there? My goodness. Translation could have been a bit off as well as just social differences. Like America is quite different from Korea. Like we don't have the same social situations going on and that is totally normal and fine but you do have to keep that in mind when listening to it because the advice is going to be different than what you would get in the U.S. But overall I thought it was fine. It just I couldn't Cindy in her Goodreads review really summed it up in a way that I appreciated and could relate to that feeling where it lacked intimacy like you couldn't it just wasn't a very intimate conversation it was very just this is how I feel why do I feel this way it could be from this but why this and it was just that back and forth so it was a little bit dry overall it was fine um it's on the shorter side so it's definitely like I do recommend it but it, if it's not something you can relate to I don't know how it's gonna go for you it's weird it's so personal that it's like I don't feel right critiquing like somebody's experience in life because that's not correct <laughs> that's not how that's done so ah um anywho besides that took today off work to take Finn to the vet um Austin ended up taking him so I kind of just had a day off and I've done nothing I've done nothing at all but I have plans to read this evening and get a little bit cozy I'm actually quite warm in this sweater right now I have started I read the foreword so far of Ling Hun Ling Hun and I'm I like the foreword I'm intrigued it's a apparently ghosty haunted house story but also is talking about immigration and so I'm intrigued I thought the foreword was very well done and beautiful I've already highlighted like four things so pretty intrigued pretty excited so I'm gonna definitely read that but I need to desperately charge my phone so I'm also listening to and reading Vita Nostra that's my plan I'm a little worried about it to be honest it's so big and the font is so small and I don't know if my big brain is really plugged in today so we're gonna attempt we're gonna see how that goes and I will let you know and check in later oh my god you guys I have somehow forgotten to tell you about one of my favorite books of this entire year my second strong er, er <laughs> five star I read the har and I loved it <laughs> I loved it so much I was so sad the entire time I never once felt a lot of happiness it was just sad but I loved it I loved it I adored it so in this we are following Miriam Margaret Macaulay and I adore her she is an elderly woman she is in this little Scotland village and you know the grant organization this big American billionaire is coming in buying up all the properties tearing everything down tearing everything down and building a golf course which I love the little vampire which has like a really big Scottish golf course so I get it but he is wrong <laughs> he's so wrong for this and so he's buying up all these properties there's about seven elderly people left that have like been raised in this village have lived there their whole lives have strong attachments and Muriel is headstrong. She is refusing to sell. She doesn't want to move. Her husband, Billy, died a few years ago. So it's just her all alone. And she doesn't want to leave. She wants to die here. She wants to like live out the rest of her days here. And it is such like such content warning for elder abuse. Physically, mentally, everything about it. Um, it gets dark as you would expect from hi as you would expect from a horror novella but oh, it's so well written I felt emotion I was sad for every death that came well I guess I should say that I was sad for the first death that came and every death after that was so deserved that I was like yeah no I stand behind this <laughs> this, is, this is good but what really kicks off the book it's like 20% in it it gets a slower start but Muriel finds this monster-like creature of some sort on the beach. She's She lives off on the Har, which is, like, I guess a beachy area or something. Um, but they have, like, the ocean there. And she finds this, like, little monster creature. She takes it back. She feeds it. She 
nourishes it she brings it basically back to life saves its life and it it does things it's got magical monster abilities and it's just so good <laughs> it's just this is kind of like a revenge story if you will i thoroughly enjoyed it though i thought it was so well done i was so interested in everything happening i thought it was really good um i like would read it in like 20 to 30 pages a day just slowly getting through it but i just i almost cried at the end like uh and it uh it's just the ending was a masterpiece i just really enjoyed it okay it was so good i really really liked it and i do recommend it it see horror and gore is such a person to person thing i did not I wouldn't classify this as extreme horror. Um, I've read Mayfly and I think Mayfly was maybe a little bit more gore filled than this. I think that it's good. Um, I also think that my brain just won't let me picture grotesque things happening to people. Like it just won't picture it. I'll picture Muriel walking on the beach with her little cane. I'll picture the caves and all those scenes. But I will not picture just like bad gross things happening so I think that's also just like my brain protecting me but I didn't think it was that bad in the gore like I think it was like a normal mediocre amount <laughs> but I don't read a lot of like gore horror so I can't really say like where it falls on a scale but I would say like Mayfly would be here and like the horror would be just like a little bit below it but I again also didn't think Mayfly was that bad so Take what I say with a grain of salt because I don't know and I don't know what your taste is going to be. But I really like this. It was short. It was good. It was sweet. I loved it. Love Muriel. She might be one of my <laughs> favorite characters so far of this year and I, I will never forget her. But that's my little <laughs> reading update. I don't think I have anything else really going on. Um, I'm like in the middle of things, but I wouldn't say I'm in a reading slump. I just want to do things and reading while doing those things doesn't sound super fun like I need to fold laundry I would rather watch bad reality tv while folding my laundry than listening to an audiobook you know but that's kind of where I'm at I, I'm in the middle of Shoko Smile I'm starting Vita Nostra but that'll probably be more talked about in next week's video since this is the last day of this vlog so you can see it tomorrow um so yeah I'll talk about everything else most likely next week realistically um, I did a little Bookiemon drawing last night, which was super important because it's due to Meredith soon. So I was working on that a lot yesterday and I think it turned out pretty cute. I'm excited. So little Bookiemon hint, if you're participating, it's a year long readathon hosted by Meredith. I'm co-hosting and, you know, helping where I can, but, uh, you just kind of can read for different prompts that are, there's like a set year long Bookiemon with all the different prompts to get different bookie month but then there's also like seasonal and themed and monthly challenges and stuff like events so there's a lot going on it's a lot of fun though and I've been thoroughly enjoying every step of the process but if you have not yet collected the teacup which the prompt for that it's just one prompt so you just have to read a book with a beautiful cover which is pretty simple so if you're trying to participate I do recommend reading a book that you think has a beautiful cover it'll count and then bada boom bada bing you got the teacup and it's gonna be important soon and I'm really excited about I like here's the thing as a host I see what I make but I don't get to see everybody else's creations until things come out so it's equally fun for me as a host to see like each monthly bookiemon because I don't know which one's gonna come out which and who made what it's just it's all very exciting and fun but that's my little tea for you <laughs> if you are participating if uh you're curious i will have the announcement and the discord in the description so you can check it out discord's great it's very like low-key um there's like the few people that are very interested and they talk a lot which is great i love seeing it um but it's a great resource and has all the information there <sighs> i'm out of breath i'm talking so much so that's my little update for you guys i think i might honestly just try to keep reading ling hun for now but I probably won't finish it today so lots of things to look forward to I've got fun things happening this weekend so that vlog is coming and I'm really excited um so fun things coming your way but I'm gonna say ta-ta because I I don't know I should probably fold laundry realistically that's like my one task for today is to do laundry 
but um, I also will probably read and do some computer stuff. So who knows? Anywho, I'm rambling for no reason. Goodbye.